Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Meeting viewers and listeners, meet Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. With me, as always, my co host, Donnie Hoover. Donnie, it is the middle of July. It's kind of hot out there. What's going on? Kind of hot. It's damn hot. <laughs> Humidity's up. It's uh, burning me up. I don't get air conditioning where I'm at. Well, you better find a way to get it. <laughs> Only way I can get it is when I get home. <laughs> My ice and coolers. All right. <laughs> anyway, joining us on this episode from the Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy, James the Stretcher Avery and Tommy Chill. Gentlemen, how are you this evening? Hi, thank you for having us. Hey, doing pretty well. How about yourself? Great, great. Um, let's let's talk about the exciting news that's going on with the Now Training Center and the Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy. Yeah, we'll uh, get into it and stuff. Um, like I said, uh, for people, for just a background on people that don't know, um, Chad and uh, James have been in wrestling for – Many, many years. Who? <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Who's that? He's Chad today. <laughs> but Chad we're, and James we're giving been... each other fake names today, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but they've been in the wrestling business many, many years, like I have as well. We're all from the Ohio area, so we all have known each other for a long time. And uh yeah, we both took different paths and you know in wrestling. And I, I stepped away for a while. And uh, Tommy kept While. going. <laughs> Tommy kept going, and then James started, and then you know. The, so here we are, all back together talking. And uh, James and and Tommy and Cyrus <laughs> has uh, started a pro wrestling school many years ago, and uh, and and so far it's been very successful. And we just want to find out a little bit about the Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy and its history and background before we go on with the news and everything. Of course. Uh, well, uh, I've been uh, in the professional wrestling business for 21 years now. I started uh, very close to my 18th birthday in the year 2000. Uh, and it's crazy that I have students that uh, weren't even alive uh, when I started pro wrestling. I really feel old. I, I have one student in particular who doesn't even know who Scott Steiner is, uh, <laughs> just because he's so young. And in, in uh I'm wearing my Steiner promo shirt. If anybody uh, interested, the greatest promo in the history of wrestling. <laughs> um, so uh, I started um, about 21 years ago, the uh, year 2000. Uh, I started where all of us started uh, at the IWA School of Wrestling, a uh, dingy office building in 1333, uh, Worst Filth Avenue in Grandview. <laughs> um, and I kind of got a taste for it. And um, I knew I wanted to take wrestling a little bit more seriously. Uh, so shortly after that, uh, I went down to Florida, Ocala, Florida, uh, was trained with Dory Funk Jr. Um, and then from that point on, I just kind of went on the road and I really just kind of learned everything the hard way. Um, unfortunately, I, I really never had that mentor figure. Uh, I mean, Tommy Chill was at the school, but uh, in reality, you know, with all due respect, he only had two, three years on him at the time. He was he was learning just as well. Uh, so I never really had that mentor figure. I really just kind of had to go on my own and figure things out. Uh, you know, unfortunately, most of the time, the hard way. Uh, but uh, if anything, if anything, I'm persistent. Uh, so I just kind of stuck with it. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to think I found a little bit of success. You know, I got to do what I loved uh, for a long time. I got to travel the country. I met a lot of friends. Um, I let a, met a lot of acquaintances. I met my wife through professional wrestling. Uh, and then roughly about eight years ago, I, I hurt my back. Um, oddly enough, not in a wrestling ring. I think it was like getting out of an office chair. <laughs> like, uh, and then um, obviously just kind of the bumps and bruises that, you know, one of those things they don't tell you when you start wrestling. Like it's, it's, it's not the one bump that does it. It's the hundreds and thousands of bumps and sitting in the car for hours and hours at a time that does it. Uh, so I just really kind of hurt myself and um, you know, I was just being sad and depressed and emo and I was complaining to my wife, you know, what if I could take the knowledge that I have now and put it in my body, uh, 
you know, at 18, what if I had all this knowledge now? And, you know, what if I had it back then, then, you know, I would have been unstoppable. And the wife was like, you know, why don't you do that? And of course I said, well, you're crazy. That's, I'm, I'm taking you to an asylum. And she's like, no, just like, we can do that. She kind of knows I always wanted to start a wrestling school. And the only reason why I was hesitant was because I was kind of always under the feeling that I would have to make it. Um, You know, I I never had like a run in WWE or anything like that. I mean, I'd like to think I've earned respect uh, within the local wrestling community, but, you know, I've never, quote, uh, made it. Um, But really, I I just kind of had to get over that that fear. Um, So I... Uh, it wasn't in the best place financially at the time, but I scrounged up 400 bucks to, to kind of rent a location. I got a loan from my parents to uh, buy a wrestling ring. Um, and I started the, at the time, the Central Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy. Um, uh, at the timing was kind of perfect. Uh, the big trainer at the time was Jeff Cannon. Uh, he recent he stopped. Uh, so there was a big gap in training in the local uh, wrestling community. Uh, and a lot of people ask me just because my wrestling style has always been uh, fundamentals first, so to speak. Uh, everybody just kind of always asks me, hey, where do I go to get trained? And I, I don't know. Uh, so I just kind of opened up my wrestling school um, uh, and um, I kind of hit the ground running my first ever student. Uh, the pinnacle Levi Connors, unfortunately, he doesn't wrestle anymore, uh, but he showed up. He had enough confidence in me um, to train him. Uh, he paid his full contract right away. So immediately I was in the black, um, you know, j- just from that one student that paid my operating expenses for six months alone. Um, and then from there, we've we just kind of built. Um, uh, it was it was originally created out of love. I, I love training. I love mentoring people. Again, I never really had that mentor figure. Um, uh, it's just something that I do out of passion. I have no trouble saying it's a passion project. Uh, and I was just kind of really fortunate that I happened to make a little bit of money from it. Um, and then uh, Cyrus and Tommy Chill came along only because I was the one in the ring. But you know, when I'm performing the techniques, I can't really see if they're good, they're bad. So um, really kind of uh, almost by accident, I, uh, me, uh, Cyrus and, and Tommy Chill, I've been friends for a long time. I kind of asked them just to kind of help out, be my eyes outside the ring. And then they just kept coming. They just kept coming. They just kept coming. And then, um, you know, it just kind of morphed into kind of what, what we had for a long time. And the school's been running for about eight years now. Yeah, we're up to, I think, eight and a half years now. Eight and a half years. Yeah, I, I feel is. so old. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's been successful. Like, we've been doing something right. But, man, eight and a half years. Like, <laughs> I just 21 years wrestling. I just feel so old. Yeah. <laughs> the school's in third grade now. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> hey, we always say the school's like uh, elementary school, right? <laughs> okay, I'll make it feel a little bit better, James. When you started wrestling, I was already 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, my story is kind of kind of similar to James. I, I mean, except for you know a couple years longer. Um, I'm coming up on about 23 years in uh, professional oh, wrestling. Look at me, 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm better than you. I got more time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of like he said, we uh, he started a year and a half to two years after I did um at that time so i was still learning and i got basically the same uh trash training uh <laughs> that he got uh from uh, the iwa school uh, where it was kind of like whoever was there just kind of like helped people there was no like kind of official training curriculum or anything like that so you just kind of you kind of figured out how to bump and then you just kind of like dudes just kind of showed you stuff as you yep. went get in there and mix it up <laughs> right. Yeah. Like whoever was there at the time, you know, whether, you know, Casanova click or big country or hustler, those guys that would have been around for, you know, maybe a couple of years before I did um, to show us stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning too. Um, I did some uh, continuing education. Uh, like I re- like to refer it as back when, uh, you know, seminars weren't, were, uh, I think a little more beneficial uh, with people like Tracy Smothers, 
um, Al Snow, guys like that. So that helped me out a lot, but I still made a ton of mistakes because I, I too didn't have any kind of like real mentor. It was a bunch of guys that were on essentially the same level or maybe just a little bit uh, b behind you, um, you know, that I was mostly traveling with uh, when I was on the road. So um, kind of like James, I made just about every mistake you possibly could um, because nobody really taught me otherwise. Um, it's been a great ride though. And once I started like figuring things out, like I really started having a lot of fun and while I've never gotten that, that big national TV run, um, like I would have really liked, um, I still, I still find professional wrestling to have been extremely beneficial to my life. Not only have I had great times, made great friends, um, it's given me experiences that I would never would have had. Otherwise I've seen, you know, parts of the country I probably would have never ever seen otherwise. So I find for wrestling to have been, been great, uh, despite, uh, the challenges that came along with it, especially in the beginning and now the challenges with, you know, my body uh, breaking down on me. Um, kind of like James, I'd have uh, back problems too. Um, I actually had back surgery in 2018, end of 2018, November, 2018. So I'm coming up on almost three years since my back surgery. And I, I just, now I'm starting to feel like a human being again. So <laughs> it took, it, it, it took a while for it to really start to feel good. Um, I know, I, I don't know it's, uh, if that's the back surgery is finally working or it was, I didn't wrestle for over a year because of COVID, <laughs> um, could be a, a combination of two. Yeah. yeah maybe a little a combination calm, a little two. Calm yeah. But, um, it's been making me, it's making me feel more, I feel a little more spry again and wanting to do more than what I was, uh, you know, prior to COVID. Um, so, you know, I've been getting in the ring more often, um, especially even at training because a lot for a long time, it was, I mostly was on the outside with Cyrus. Um, but you know, here lately, I've been trying to get in the ring more often and do things um, since I'm feeling better. And uh, when I saw what uh, what James was doing at the uh, uh, then Central Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy, um, I thought it was a really good thing because I, I saw um, that gap in, in training, not just with Jeff Cannon leaving uh, training, but with the independent wrestling scene in general, because there's just a ton of young guys out there that didn't know what they were doing. Um, and we're falling and it's gotten into the same traps that we did, um, you know, at the time, you know, 15 years ago or whatever. Um, so I saw a chance to, you know, we've all, we, we like to say, or what James says a lot is that, uh, I, I don't know everything, but I've made every mistake possible. Mm -hmm. So I, we can, we can figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. so that's kind of like a, I really liked that we were pointing people in the right direction. And I thought kind of, uh, part of what the legacy that, uh, the, we could leave, uh, on professional wrestling is trying to leave it better than what it was when we got into it. Uh, and by putting talented pro professional wrestlers out there that actually know what they're doing uh, and have their etiquette in line um, really would be beneficial to the independent wrestling scene, not only just in Ohio, but, you know, all across the Midwest um, as our guys have gotten more experience and started to travel more. To add on what you said, not only was there a lack of good training, there was a number of people that, in my opinion, sh should not be training. So not only was there a lack of positive influences, there were outright negative influences Absolutely. Um, out there. So uh, the, the timing was kind of perfect. And and like Tommy Chill said, again, I, I, I'll i be the first person to, to claim I, I, I don't know everything, but let, let us make those mistakes for you so you don't have to but you know the, these kids they got to touch the stove anyway <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yep. laughs> that's for sure i think we all did that though didn't we <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's the, the uh, crosshairs kelly is actually the one that told us that he's like it's the the parent syndrome even though we're telling even though we tell them the right thing to do and what not to do they still have to touch the hot stove and see <laughs> You know, is it really hot? I told you it was hot. You just burned yourself. Right. <laughs> Crosshairs would come back on Sunday for trans. Like you guys were right the whole time. I, I just, I, 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 I touched the stove. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I touched the stove and it was hot. You guys are right. <laughs> nice. That is a great metaphor. Yep, absolutely. And your guys' third partner, uh, Cyrus, he's basically almost has an identical story story as tommy that you guys kind of started near the same time with each other if i'm if i remember right it wasn't too far much far apart yeah he started just a few months before i did so we were basically at the starting at the same time i think he, he actually he started a little bit earlier in the year than i did but then he had to stop and came back so mm -hmm. like our time our time was probably exactly the same but he he uh was a few months ahead of me 
right yeah so, even though we started together it's not like we've all been joined at the hip for the past 20 years we've right. all kind of gone on and done our own thing but you know even though our paths kind of separated wrestling wise uh, in our personal lives we've always remained good friends so um you know kind of coming together with the wrestling school just you know kind of seemed you know pretty natural mm-hmm So let's talk about some of your students or your former students. Um, you know, they're wrestling all over Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky now. You know, I, I see um, all, o- all over the world, all, yeah. o- all over the world, all over yeah. the country. And I'd like to just correct you on one thing. We don't have any former students. Um, th- you never, you don't know everything. No one knows everything. I don't mm-hmm. know everything. Uh, if you get the go ahead from us, you know, you're, you're, you're one of us. We don't have former alum or everything. Um, I, that's kind of part of what separates us is, is our support system after the fact. A lot of wrestling schools just, all right, you're trained. There you go. And then just kind of push them out the nest. Uh, I think one thing that separates us a lot is we're essentially a lifetime membership. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Just Just <laughs> one of those. Being corrected. I appreciate yes. you. <laughs> the, the only delineation you could probably do is graduates and students. Graduates are people that are already on the road. Uh, students are people that are not on the road. But I mean, like like James said, it's it's a lifetime membership once you sign up with us. Like we still like have guys that have been, you know, been on the road for over six years that come back to training and, you know, to learn things and talk to us and, you know, figure things out. And, and give back. Yeah. And give back to the current students. Mm-hmm. And I admire you guys for that and the fact that that you've got all these people out here and you were a staunch defender of your beliefs, which, like I said, the way you put it makes much more sense, James, than a former student. Uh, and I really I admire that. My beliefs, you may sound like we're like a religious cult or, or something <laughs> like that. Nope, not a not a cult, although we have been referred to as a motorcycle gang by some people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, just, 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 just a school. <laughs> yeah, our students have been all over the place. They've been as uh, far east as Japan and as far west as North Dakota. Actually, I take that back. California. Yeah, we did have some people get, California. Yeah, we did have some people work in California. So as far west as California and far east as Japan. Nice. That's, that's got to make you guys feel great. I mean, having them all over the world. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, when yeah. you see that we see them succeeding, it's it's our succeed. We're succeeding. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I have no problem saying I live vicariously through my students. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had kids, I'd be one of those jerks who, with the bumper stickers like my kid is better than your kid at <laughs> baseball and stuff. Uh, I have no problem saying I live vicariously uh, through my students. Um, it, it, at the end of the day, they're my legacy. Um, you know, I. I I've been doing this for 21 years. Uh, I still wrestle. Uh, I, I have a show later this month. Uh, but the end of, uh, at the end of the day, I wrestle for me. Um, I've done what I'm going to do in wrestling. Uh, ultimately, these students are my legacy. These students are, you know, what we're contributing. So, um, you know, it, it, yeah, uh, of course, we want our students to be as successful as possible. That's the thing with mentoring and wrestling. Rest, professional wrestling is an extremely selfish business. The reality is, you know, they want people to be successful up to a point. Uh, everybody will lend you a hand, um, but no one's going to push you up past them. Uh, where I'm the first one to say, no, you know, I want all my students to be better than me. I want them to get farther than me. Uh, That's why I like to say like our school is essentially the elementary school. Our goal is to get you out on the road as soon as possible. Um, You know, so that, you know, the the end goal is I I want everybody to be better than I want, than I am. Very cool. Hey, I want to touch on what you said about the motorcycle gang uh, thing. It's, it's interesting to, to talk about it. And I, yeah, I'd like to get it out there from your guys' point of view. And uh, the people, you know, people have referred to, to the OPWA got people as motorcycle gang and stuff like that. And, and we all think it's kind of funny, but it's, it's not really so much that it's just the family atmosphere. Like you said, it's a lifetime membership. 
you know, everybody supports each other. You know, you guys have your own, you know, Facebook group, private Facebook group where you guys post stuff about, Hey, I got this show who wants to jump in the car for a ride. You know, it, basically it's like a group, uh, it's a company working together, you know, everybody working together, trying to push each other up and, you know, take care of each other. So, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say it's more or less motorcycle gangs ish, as opposed to if you guys are like everybody that's a member of the camp is protective of their own. So, I mean, how would you guys? No, no, that? I like motorcycle gang. We're like, a, <laughs> no. Yeah, like and that. if you, if you leave, we'll hunt you down and end you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't um, get to leave. You don't, you don't get to leave voluntarily. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, 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 I'm, I'm No, we're, we're in fact, in fact, our, our shirts are actually a motorcycle uh, low. I, I even got my, uh, latest gear has a motorcycle uh, logo. I don't have it handy, but it's a it's a motorcycle logo with a skull, and it says Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy on it. So, <laughs> yeah. um, when we heard about the uh, the motorcycle game reference, uh, gang reference, uh, Cyrus Poe, who did, he does some graphic design work, and he came up with a, a logo for us that's like a motorcycle gang, like the kind of a takeoff of the Sons of Anarchy thing. Nice. <laughs> and I don't, I, don't, I don't care if it was meant in a positive or negative way. Yeah, but here's the reality: I've been doing this for 21 years. Uh, I'm coming up on my 39th birthday. The reality is I am way past caring what people think about me. Uh, <laughs> there was a time in my life where, no, I need to get bookings. I need everybody to care. I need everybody to like me. Um, I, I can't speak for Tommy Chill, but me personally, I'm way past the point of people liking me or not. If you like me, cool. If not, hey, you know. Um, but I, I like the motorcycle thing. Again, again, we're loyal. Um, you know, I, I'm hesitant to use the word family, especially with the, all these Vin Diesel memes running around. Like it's the one meme that I'm kind of sick of now with the whole family thing. Um, but I am very protective of uh, our students just because, you know, rest, professional wrestling is very cutthroat, very mm -hmm. uh, selfish business. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys coming in, uh, don't have a lot of uh, what I would call real life experience. Uh, they haven't kind of realized that for lack of a better word, everybody's out to get them. Uh, so I do get a little defensive over them. I mean, at the end of the day, they're grown adults and, you know, are absolutely capable of standing up for themselves. Um, but they all know at the end of the day, you know, we got their back, whether it's something wrestling related, whether it's, you know, something personal going on in their lives and they just need advice or just a vent, um, you know, they know we're here for them. Yeah, there's one incident I think of specifically, like it kind of <laughs> lends itself to the motorcycle gang references. Uh, you know, we have a, a guy out of a graduated from the school. He's a referee named Tim. And, you know, he's a smaller dude, like he's not real big. And, you know, he's got a, he stutters a little bit. So people sometimes make fun of him. And, uh, you know, we heard once he was at a show refereeing and, you know, people were, uh, being very mean to him and i don't mean mean in a way that's like good-natured wrestling ribbing like having some fun with people i mean like they're just being mean to him for the sake of being mean to him you know we had a car loaded up ready to drive the show and uh you know fuck some shit up um, on, on, his behalf, on his behalf um before you know we got called off at the last minute <laughs> <laughs> Just protecting like, the cubs huh <laughs> exactly i mean it's like i said we we will we'll bust on each other you know as all the time but you know that's just between us like that doesn't count for people outside of the group if you mess yeah. with one of ours i, I, I always like to yeah we mm -hmm. always like to tell our students we could tell you your garbage no one outside of here can tell you your garbage <laughs> but we'll tell you your garbage all day though <laughs> I think one of the benefits for us too is like uh, with working with our students is that, um, you know, like James said, and, and I agree, like I'm beyond the point of re people really caring or uh, if I have heat. So, you know, we'll tell all three of us will tell, uh, tell the students, like if something goes wrong or something gets miscommunicated or whatever happens, you can point the heat on us. Like you could tell us, tell them we told you to do it, even if we didn't tell you to do it. <laughs> And we'll take the heat because we don't care because we're not really trying to get booked every weekend like they are. Right. So we'll, we'll take the heat. So, but just tell us, just let us know, give us a heads up. So if somebody contacts us, we know what's going on. So we don't go, huh? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? You, you son of a bitch. We're fine. Like, yeah. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. do you think that's happened out there? Do you think you guys have had stuff uh, said about you and stories come up about you that you guys really in reality had no involvement in? Um. Uh probably <laughs> the, sure <laughs> probably, I, probably. <laughs> again, again i sure probably i don't i don't care <laughs> uh, on, honestly don't think about it either way 
Yeah. A, a, a long time ago, I, I may have thought about it and worried about it. But again, I'm I'm almost 40. We're, we're kind of past that point. Um, just at, at the end of the day, uh, students are priority. So as long as they're uh, taken care of, I'll, I'll be the bad guy all day long. All right. Now you made reference about like busting balls and ribbon and all that. And uh, do you guys, cause I, like I said, I, I've, I've heard stories of you guys being, you know, real brutal in some of your trainings as in being mean to people. And, and I've seen some to where I'm like, you know, well, it's really not that bad. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I know you guys do push your students and, and that's the way trainers should be. They should yell at them when they screw up, they should push them. They should uh, try to make them the best they can be. Uh, so how, how, uh, how aggressive do you like to get? I mean, I know you guys don't try to hurt anybody. I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. Trainers should yell at their students. I, I don't agree mm. with that. Um, the reality is there is no secret training technique. Uh, different people are motivated by different things. Um, the one thing that I don't believe in is the old school mentality of, um, you know, trying to make people quit by, you know, doing cardio to death or by roughing them up uh, in, in the, the ring. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that. I'm 100% against that. Um, if somebody, you know, this isn't, you know, mixed martial arts. If somebody is giving you their body and then you're taking advantage of that, um, you're the jerk. Uh, that doesn't make you a tough guy. Mm -hmm. um, that type of old school stuff has no place in professional wrestling. Um, yeah, I, I don't agree. You know, back in the day, we'd put a guy in the corner and chop him till he bleeds and all that. I, not me personally, but I mean, that was kind of like common thing. Um, or, you know, you, you'd stretch him out or, or whatever. Uh, I, I don't agree with that at all. Um, some, some, Sometimes do students need corrected? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's true, you know, sometimes, you know, you yell at them once or twice and they're just not getting it. Uh, you know, sometimes you need to put your hands on them, but never to hurt them. It's, it's a coaching opportunity. Uh, but like I was getting at, my philosophy on training is there is no secret training method that works for everybody. The reality is people come from different backgrounds. Uh, everybody has different motivators. Uh, the one thing that would motivate person A uh, would just totally uh, demoralize person B. Um, some people do need that positive push. Some people crumple on negative reinforcement. Um, it's really just kind of finding out, you know, what everybody's motivators are uh, and going from there. Um, I, I don't yell just for the sake of yelling. Um, you know, if something needs to come across or if the point needs to be made, uh, I'd like to think at this point I've earned everybody's respect where, uh, you know, I can, you know, speak calm and slow and everybody pays attention to what I say. Um, again, I'm not I'm not shying away from the tough love, um, but I only do it when it's necessary. I even though I, with some people I may, you know, have the reputation of being a hard ass. Um, I, I think I'm kind of the furthest from it. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, finding out what motivates people uh, and being as efficient as possible, because the reality is, you know, wrestling training isn't full time. I don't have these guys for 40 hours a week. Uh, you know, typically we have them for six to eight hours a week. Uh, so I have to be as efficient with my time as possible. I don't have time to sit there and do blow up drills for two hours. Now, Tommy Chell and Cyrus, on the other hand, they're, they, they can be bad cops, but <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, we have different levels. We have bad cop, worst, worst cop and worst cop. <laughs> 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 but I mean, for the, I mean, we definitely do get our stern most of the time. Like, cause we just want to, like you said, we have a finite amount of time, so we don't want to like have people screwing around. And uh, I think we, usually we end up raising our voices uh, when people do things that the common things that make us frustrated. So things like not listening. So like if we're showing a technique to one or two people in the middle of the ring, you know, and there's six or seven students around the ring watching, and then they're not paying attention to what we're teaching in the ring. So then when they get in, we have to teach it all over again. Then we end up teaching the same damn thing, you know, four or five times, which then wastes a whole bunch of time. So, I mean, that kind of stuff will frustrate us really fast. You know, we're not going to kick the shit out of them for it, but we're probably going to raise our voices and get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Did 2020 take its toll on your fitness? Well, body slam the pandemic and get back in shape with WrestleFit. This innovative program combines all the fitness regimens you'll need to reach your goals. The WrestleFit workout will bring strength training, cardio, and the world of professional wrestling together in a fun, new, and exciting way. Have yourself a blast working out with dumbbells, kettlebells, slam balls, ropes, tires, and an 18-foot full-size wrestling ring. The WrestleFit workout isn't just for pro wrestlers. The WrestleFit workout is for everybody. At the NOW Training Center, you can pursue your fitness goals and learn how to train like a professional wrestler without all the bumps, bruises, and slams with the WrestleFit workout. Go to www.newohiowrestling.com slash training for more information or stop by the NOW Training Center at 625 Eastgate Parkway, Blacklick, Ohio, 43004, Unit 6137. You got anything you want to ask, Jim? I kind of like took over there for a little bit. <laughs> like... All right, you're fine. Um, you know, I've watched your family, and I'm going to say your family, and I, anything else. I watched <laughs> them from Hamilton to Akron and back and forth. Uh, and, you know, from what I've seen, uh, James, Tommy, you guys have put out some serious quality product. There's a lot of great talent out there that has your fingerprints on them. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, I, I wish I could say it was all us. Um, ultimately, uh, it's it's the guys and girls. Uh, they're the ones putting in the work. Uh, we're just showing them the doors. At the end of the day, they're the ones walking uh, through it. Um, really, I, I mean, I don't. I don't think we're doing anything extremely different than a lot of other, you know, big league or, you know, successful schools are. I just think at the end of the day, we just, we, it sounds corny and lovey dovey, but we just, we care. Uh, we want them uh, to be successful uh, at, at the end of the day. Yeah. I think that that's really the secret sauce is that we care and we, we show, we show that we do um, in the way that we do things. Um you know, we're not just, we, we say that we're not really just wrestling trainers, like we're kind of life coaches. Like we, we will help our students out with anything they need help with personally. Like I do a lot of like, uh, you know, I help people with, uh, you know, writing letters and uh, things like that. Cause you know, like Queen Aminata, sure, English is her fourth language. So like when she's writing, uh, you know, emails to the WWE or AEW or really anybody, she'll run it through me um to make sure her grammar's okay and then she's not messing things up and it looks okay i know james is you know he has a background he did collections for a lot of years so he's helped people out with you know that have had collection accounts and things like that um you know cyrus does you know, graphic design work and helps with uh, other things for people so I mean, we kind of like a full service kind of school like we tell people like if if you have a problem just you know message one of us or message all of us and talk to us about it we'll, we'll do whatever we can to help you out whether it's wrestling related or not because uh, we want them to be the best people that can they can be because um, that'll carry over into wrestling. Because, um, you know, if your personal life isn't together, you're not going to be successful in wrestling. That's one of the things that will mess you up the quickest is if you don't have your personal life together because professional wrestling requires a whole bunch of time. So if your personal life is not in line, then you're not going to be able to devote the time it needs to be successful. Yeah, pro wrestling is not a substitute for real life. Mm -mm. Yeah, you, mentioning, you got, you got to have, sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just say mentioning uh, Queen Aminata when uh, I heard the story about when she just had her recent ADF, AEW dark matches and uh, she was literally texting you guys just minutes and hours before her match, mm -hmm. like, asking advice on what she should do and all this and that. And I thought that was a really cool story. You know, she's getting her, her moment and she's like, I got to check with my trainers, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, she was we, I'm sorry, God. I was just gonna say, yeah, I think she was messaging us like literally minutes before she walked out of the curtain. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we tend to put her on a pedestal, uh, at least with our students. Or, you know, we like to constantly remind her she's our favorite. And I'm <laughs> saying, I'm saying it on a recording, so now it's official. Um, she but, loves it when we say that too. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I'm not speaking out of turn uh, when I say she was not good when she came in. She was a completely different person. Very shy, very timid, no confidence, no coordination, just bad, almost to the point where. Like, I think we was legitimately a week away or, or a week or two away from pulling her aside and going, look, is pro wrestling really for you? Uh, and then it just, and then it just a flip, 
she just flipped the switch and uh, she's kind of became the person that she is today. Um, and I appreciate that because um, at the end of the day, it kind of shows that our system works. Um, you know, there are some people who, you know, like a, a Levi Connors, uh, um, Flex Jordan was one of them, a Louise Casanova, uh, guys who, no matter what school they went to, the reality is they're going to be successful just because they're natural athletes, they're easily coachable. I like to look at James the Baker Hickey, uh, Queen Aminata, um, Duke Beefhammer, um, people who, you know, with all due respect, didn't, didn't have a hope <laughs> and we were able to turn them into wrestlers. So whereas a lot of other schools like to go to their more successful people and like, Hey, look what we did. Um, you know, not naming names or anything. Uh, you know, I like to look at, at those people and go like, look, you know, we were able to turn these people into wrestlers uh, and queen Aminata is, is one of those people. Um, I truly believe she would not be where she is if she went elsewhere uh either either they would have given her the hey wrestling's not for you or they would have probably pushed her out the went pushed her out the door early and went hey, you're good enough for a girl that's a good point you know i've got to say james um queen aminata since you once we've been talking about her who's our favorite <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled to see her on the AEW dark matches, but you know, I haven't been in this business quite as long as you guys have been. Um, we're only talking a couple of years here, but she was the very first wrestler I ever announced for at a new Ohio wrestling show. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. And she got in his face. <laughs> <laughs> she did. It sounds kinda, right. <laughs> she kind of looked at me and snatched the microphone out of my hand and, Jim got scared because he didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't told her it's fake yet. <laughs> Nobody prepped me on all this. All of a sudden, <sighs> happened, he's like, okay, I'm just going to go with this. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and she was such a joy afterwards. She came with me and said, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. And, and that meant the world to me, you know, uh, being brand new at this. And then when she said that, so, you know, you've got a great, great talent there. And uh, I can't wait to see more things from you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to hear. Uh, hey, we we want... had... I'm sorry. Go ahead. You go ahead, James. I was just going to say, we uh, kind of wanted to get into our news with uh, what we was getting ready to talk about the beginning before we kind of got. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. We're at that point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, as, uh, as everybody already knows on the podcast here, you know, that I started new Ohio wrestling in 2015 and uh, just a little history uh, that people probably don't know is before I even started the promotion, I had met with uh, James and Chill and Sam and uh, Cyrus mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and uh, we talked about maybe one day, you know, us partnering up and doing, you know, a, a big spot where we have a building and we have a training center and we do wrestling shows there and and all that. And that's like I said, this was six years ago. And uh and it kind of just fell to the wayside, you know, because they kept building their school and doing their thing. We, you know, were focused on growing New Ohio. And uh, so, and then we did come back a couple years later and we kind of, you know, half hearted put the toe in the water trying to find a building here in Columbus. And the fact of the matter is, it's just so damn expensive here in Columbus, it was hard to find a good building. So, you know, James and, and them were just there, they were out in Newark. And uh, we were basically just renting. We didn't have a building of our own. We were just renting buildings for our, our events. And, you know, our business was ran out of our garage and our house. So, and uh, so, yeah, you know, COVID hit, everything kind of shut down. Uh, just as I had got our new ring and rehabbed it from the ground up and, and uh, got big dirty back to life. And, and uh, long story short, being home with COVID and big dirty tucked away in the garage and me being me, Terry pretty much got sick of me and she's like, you need to start looking for a building and get the ring out of my garage. Number one. <laughs> and number two, you get out of my house and start blowing off some energy because you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> so that's kind of how it all started. So, you know, we started looking for a spot <clears throat> and then I reached out to Mark Koval and mentioned it to him. Like, Hey, if you hear anything, let me know. And you know, just a couple weeks after that, he called me out of the blue and, you know, Hey, I got a spot you know, blah, blah, blah. Now we're at the now training center. And, uh, 
So we, we started our own, you know, we started doing our own thing because, you know, truth be told, I've never owned a business before, a brick and mortar business. I've never owned a gym before. I had no idea how to run a gym or a training center. So I've been, you know, focused solely on learning how to do this and get it all set up and done right. And then we started getting, uh, and our, our initial idea was just for me to put the ring in a building to, um, just so I can get some exercise and work out and blow off some steam. And then some wrestlers that are around the local area, you know, cause I was hearing, you know, the closest ring was two, three hours in some cases, and depending on which direction you live and to get some practice in. So we just, you know, the initial goal was just to get the ring up so people could use it. And then, uh, you know, we started talking about exercise and cardio and then the idea of a cardio workout program came about and, and long story short, the WrestleFit thing happened. And then now all of a sudden we're, you know, a full out, you know, training center, you know, we have weight equipment, we have a wrestling ring, we have, you know, a business, we have supplements, we have done for you meals. I mean, we have all this stuff that was not even in the cards at the start. So we started getting people reaching out to us, wanting to have us train them. And I'm like, well, hell, I ain't never trained nobody before. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I was talking, you know, and I, re I had to reach out to Superman Onyx or the fitness program, because obviously I'm not the fittest guy in the world. <laughs> so I needed to find somebody who was an expert at fitness and nutrition. So I was like, well, I've never trained nobody. I was like, I'm sure I could stumble through it to start. And then, so, yeah, I got, I got a couple people to help me. We started doing a little training. And then, uh, yeah, and like I said, I, I never, I never stopped uh, staying in touch or keeping my eye on, on James and them guys. And then, uh, just out of the blue, we kind of started talking. And at, at, at us, I think it was at our, at our training center. You guys come over and reached out, and we just started like, you know, talking about the idea of possibly um, you moving your camp from Newark to our training center, and working together as a partnership. And, uh, you know, we've had multiple meetings, you know, we, cause we both have our, our qualms and issues about, you know, you guys have your beliefs. We have our beliefs and you, you're straightforward. Just like, I don't want to train cardio. Just like, cause you said, you guys have limited time. You want to just focus strictly on wrestling, which that's great. I, I totally agree with that. And then I'll, you know, we're kind of like, well, you know, we, we got our fitness thing going. So, you know, you guys focus on wrestling. We can focus on fitness. We can bring in the best of both worlds. You know, you have your system. It's already successful. And you, like you said, uh, when you was talking, you can just plug it in and go. And then it all kind of made sense. So we've, you know, like I said, we've had multiple meetings, kind of hashed everything out. Uh, we're giving it a test run and you guys have, have been at the now training center for a couple of weeks now and we're starting to draw interest um we've got a we've got you know some new signups we've got some people that's coming for tryouts uh, as we speak today we just got another tryout so you guys might have uh two coming sunday okay. um so uh you know people starting to reach out and take notice and you know like i said you guys your guys's background is training wrestlers you know my background's more kind of like marketing and business a little bit and then you know we have our people that's mark you know that's good with fitness doing the fitness part of it so it's like a bunch of people coming together to try to create this uh, training center because my belief is and i'm sure you guys feel the same way and uh, even back when we had the bob evans seminar which you know we told the story with each other but bob was you know doing a seminar at the training center and he made a reference to you know just playing like a heel gimmick goofing around and was like acting like a bad guy saying all these you know shitty columbus wrestlers and you know wrestlers ohio suck and and i like legit got heated about it because <laughs> deep down i kind of knew it was true and it was pissing me off because <laughs> you know in columbus we've in columbus we've had a bad rap for many years of you know not having good training good education good wrestling in the central ohio area so you know my goal just as your guys's goal is is i want to change that i want i mean there's no reason why we shouldn't have great wrestling promotions in columbus and surrounding areas there's no reason why we shouldn't have great training centers in columbus surrounding areas so that's what i yeah that we're we're trying to put everything together in the one package and everybody work together to accomplish that goal and uh, so, yeah, from, for your guys' standpoint, um, what brought the interest on and, and, uh, and had you guys reach out and work this out with us? Well, I just, I, I think just kind of, you know, we, like you said, we were talking at the Bob Evans seminar. Um, I just, I, I just kind of think that the stars just kind of aligned perfectly at that time. Uh, you know, we've been approached by potential um, investors, uh, want to be business partners, promotions. We've been approached several times in the past. Uh, and obviously every time I've declined because at, at the end of the day, um, 
I do not want anything about the training to be uh, compromised. Uh, I'm a trainer first. Uh, my loyalty is to uh, the students. Um, and again, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, not to get rich or anything, just, you know, I'm doing this because, you know, training professional wrestlers uh, is my passion. Um, so again, I just, I, I think we kind of both, um, you know, I, I, I know what I lack. I, I've never been interested in selling uh, the school. Um, and like you said, you know, you, you're kind of more into the business side. So um, I just kind of think that the stars just kind of aligned. Uh, and, um, you know, I, you know, uh, I believe, you know, we brought something to the table that you didn't have and you brought something to the table that, you know, we didn't have. And, um, you know, so far the trial run is great. Uh, so uh, we're, you know, we're, we're the Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy at the NOW Training Center. Uh, mm -hmm. So right now we're, we're training uh, Sundays, 11 to three, and then Tuesdays, six to eight. Although every Tuesday we normally run long anyway. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we're, we're just kind of doing a test run, but things are going great. Uh, we got a good group of students. Um, we got a couple of naturals, couple of what I would call projects. Um, but uh, again, at the end of the day, I like to say, you know, we made Baker a wrestler. So um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, it, it, you know, everything's kind of coming together. Um, you know, I've always just, you know, been the wrestling training, but you know, now, you know, we got the wrestling, we got the fitness, um, you know, my dream has always been kind of like the all in one, the one stop shop pro mm -hmm. wrestling performance center style. Yep. That's yep. kind of always been my ultimate, uh, goal. Yeah, I think there's been a there's been a desire for to try to get to put the school in Columbus for a while, um, you know, at different times throughout the school's length while it's been in Newark. You know, all three of us uh, have looked around Columbus at different points in time, trying to find you know a facility that would be usable and not you know cost an arm and a leg on top of it. And it's just we get, sometimes we'd get a lead and we check on it and it would fall through or it end up being way more expensive than what we were told and uh, so I think it's a, it's a good marriage uh, in that respect then, because it's just being more centrally located in, in, uh, in Columbus as opposed to Newark. And it's easier for people to understand where we're at as well. If you say we're in Columbus versus in Newark, because mm. you know, Newark's, Newark's not a tiny town, but it's not, you know, well known for people that live outside of central Ohio. Right. Yeah. Especially considering that a lot of our student base, uh, a lot of our guys don't even come from Ohio. So yeah. Um, mm you know, that, that always makes things uh, a little bit easier. So. Yep. All right. I'm, I'm going to throw this guy. We're, we're live on the podcast. I'm going to throw it at you and uh, you guys can shit on it if you want. Cause I know if you don't like it, you will. <laughs> so, you ready for it? Sure. N O P W A new Ohio pro wrestling Academy. <laughs> 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 James is like, now how can it's, I put this nicely? <laughs> uh, can I? Should I? Should I literally it's, take my pants down and shit on it? Right. <laughs> we've 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 been doing it eight years. It's not exactly new. The trainers aren't exactly new. <laughs> Maybe one day, but not today, or not tomorrow, or, or next. Maybe week. the next. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you know, I, I mean, I can't predict the future. You know, everything might even mm -hmm. go, you know, be better than expected. Um, but, uh, you know, just one, one day at a time. Uh, yep. Like I said, you know, my, you know, my main concern is, is, is the student. So, um you know, uh, all I hope is all, all the students look forward to training on Sundays and Tuesdays. I hope they look forward to it as, as much as I look forward to, to going there on those days and teaching them. Oh, yeah. yeah I say I enjoy watching myself because, like I said, I, I've never had any training skills or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I go there myself. Like when you guys have your, you know, your Wednesday class, yeah, your Tuesday class that's usually when I do like my strength training and stuff. So I'm usually there and I just kind of hang out and watch. And, and I actually, you know, like I said, I'm a big proponent of learning and education anyway. So I kind of just sit there and kind of watch and learn and, and I'm finding it very fascinating and interesting myself, to be honest. 
I, I try to keep it interesting. I got to keep these kids attention with their TikToks and their MTV and their, <laughs> you know, two second attention span. Uh, but that does bring up an excellent point. Uh, we've always had an open door policy. Um, you, you know, whether it's people wanting to get in the business, uh, want to come for a tryout or people who are in the business want to knock off some ring rust uh, or, you know, more experienced people who, um you know, possibly come, you know, you know, maybe learn a thing or two. Uh, we've always had an open door uh, policy. So um, just if, if you're near Columbus and even if you're an experienced wrestler, uh, you know, come by, check us out. Uh, as Stu Hart would say, uh, maybe you can uh, teach me a thing or two. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we've gotten some, you know, really positive things out of doing that as well. We get guys that come in and, you know, give a different perspective, uh, on things that we don't have, or, you know, we get, uh, you know, got people that we consider end up being part of the family. Um, like, you know, Spiritu Maya, who's hitting it hard right now. Like he's, he's really getting, he's really ramping up to be something good, something special. And, you know, he didn't origin his original training wasn't with us. He trained outside of Columbus, but then he moved to Columbus and he was looking for somewhere to land where he could keep learning and keep growing, uh, and get some different perspectives and he came with us and now he's he's wholeheartedly a part of you know the opwa family a part of our he's part of our motorcycle gang um <laughs> now and i mean just recently we had um you know uh, lena lennox she uh, relocated from the philadelphia area back to columbus because uh, her parents are here and uh you know she's joined us now within the last few weeks and because she wanted somewhere she's only been wrestling for i think a couple of years and one of those was a COVID or three years and one of them was a COVID year so that's basically a wash so right. she's looking for somewhere to land where she could keep learning and growing as well so um you know that's it's really great to have these people come in and see what we're doing and that it's working well and even though they've trained elsewhere they see the value and uh they see value in uh, being around us and coming to the school Oh yeah, a good portion of our students started elsewhere. Either they were not happy with their initial training or uh, like in those two examples where they, they did have good training, uh, they just, you know, want to, to expand. So um, yeah, we, we, you know, we take in, you know, all experience levels. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, we don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. Unless you're bad, then... <laughs> uh, well, I've watched uh, Lane Lennox wrestle quite a bit for Cody Hawk's promotion, Future Great. Uh, I see her just about every weekend. She's got skills. Uh, she has she has a lot of potential, um, but I don't. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. I, I don't. I don't think you've even seen a, a fraction of what I think she's capable of. Um, I, I, I hope she sees what we see in her and, uh, I just hope that everyone else will, will see that too. Um, she has all the tools to be a star. Uh, we, it's just a matter of just kind of putting those pieces together. Okay. All right. So see Jim, the best is yet to come. You didn't even realize it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm down here in Hamilton, so I'm usually there on Friday nights. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're at FGW every every week, ain't you? Pretty much. Yeah, we have a couple. Of, uh, Brandon Fields goes down there. I know Pat the Bruiser's down there uh, every once in a while. So uh, I know I know a couple of our guys make the trip every week. You know, it's funny because uh, when Brandon comes out, my wife and I are the only ones who cheer for him, regardless of him being a heel. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that's two people that cheer for him. <laughs> We we joke that uh, you know Fields he he's actually another guy that came from elsewhere he trained elsewhere originally and uh, was not trained well and then he came to us and he's most definitely our our best uh, our best wrestler that has come out of our school like but we always joke that he's kind of he's a little boring <laughs> he's a little boring <laughs> he's a professional he's a professional he's, yeah, he's just a professional <laughs> at least he le he leaned into that so yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, every time we do the podcast, whether it be haunting or horror or, or whatever, or wrestling, we try to pull some gold nuggets out. And I know I know already what your first answer is going to be. So I'm going to ask for two answers from each of you. <laughs> so uh, the one thing I want to ask you is what is your best piece of advice for somebody wanting to get into pro wrestling and start training? 
um, two things. One, try. Uh, I would say out of every 10 emails, maybe one follows up on it. Um, you know, the reality is, you know, if you put it off a year, you're just going to wish you started this year. Uh, and if you put it off two years, you're just going to wish you started earlier. Um, you know, at one point in your life, um, you know, the, the, the regrets enter your mind and, you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go, well, what if, what if, you know, uh, I think you at least owe to yourself to try. Uh, I mean, at least if you try, uh, and it's not for you, it's not for you. Uh, I, I have all the respect in the world for everyone who comes through our class. And as long as they're an adult about it and just come to us and go like, look, I thought this was for me. It's not for me. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't think wrestling's for everyone. Uh, you know, I'll bid you adieu on, on good terms. Um, and the other piece of advice is kind of learned from my mistakes. Um, really, I never pushed myself as hard as I could because I was, uh, unfortunately, kind of, I had that fear of failure. Um, so I, unfortunately, I never really, really, really gave it 100%. Uh, but I, in my mind, I always justified it as, well, who cares if I don't make it? I never try. I never really gave it a hundred percent. And now that I'm older, looking back, like that's stupid. <laughs> um, so, you know, something for my students, something for anybody in wrestling, just don't half-ass, put all of your ass into it. Don't be afraid to fail. Um, if, if you truly give it your all, and then don't make it at the end of the day, you can look back and go, I did everything in my power to make it. And it just didn't work out my way. And that's way better than having regrets of, well, I could have pushed myself more. I could have been on the road more. I could have disciplined my body more. I could have done this. I could have done that. Um, the regret is the worst thing. Uh, so I just want to tell everybody out there, whether you're in the wrestling business or not, you know, don't, don't make my mistakes and live with regret. Not that I regret my life. I mean, I, you know, I'm proud of what I've done. I'm proud of what I'm doing now. Uh, but there's always a piece of me that goes, you know, what if, um, you know, I, I like to think I made it, you know, pretty far on my own. What if I really committed? Uh, so I just want to tell everybody, like, don't, don't be afraid of failure, especially with wrestling. Every professional wrestler has an expiration date on them. Uh, that's the reality of it. Uh, the time to start is now, not tomorrow, not the day after, not next year. Uh, we all have an expiration date. Uh, so again, if you're in pro wrestling or if you're considering getting into professional wrestling, I think you owe it to yourself. Just try, try it. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you, but who knows, you might get in and you might fall in love with it. Like I did. Yep. That's a great point. Like I said, I tell people, you know, every now and again that I like failing and I love to fail and they think I'm weird, but you know, failure is learning. You know, when you fail, you grow. Sucking but, is the first step to getting good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, uh, I mean, the common thing usually here in wrestling is uh, uh, mouth closed, ears open. Um, but I, I disagree with that in a way. Um, I think you should, you should be listening, but you should be asking questions as well. I think that all kind of rolls up into one thing and that's, uh, being coachable, which is probably the biggest way that you will be successful. Um, once you commit, uh, to, to professional wrestling, um, you know, the people that we've had who have had the most success with us, uh, with their training are the ones that listen the ones that ask questions uh, when it's the open time like you know sometimes we'll go hey what do you want to learn and then they speak up and have a bunch of stuff that they want to learn um, and then you know that when we're teaching fundamentals or we're teaching going through drills and things like that they really listen to what we're saying uh, and it doesn't have to be repeated a hundred times for them to to catch on um, but in the, in the contrary to that is they ask questions when something doesn't make sense, even though they've listened, you know, if it doesn't make sense, they ask questions. You know, we've had people like, um, you know, like a chase winners. He was, a, he, he was a super athlete. Um, you know, he got clear the quickest of any of our students, but the thing that really helped him more than being a super athlete and being in great shape was that he was very coachable. He listened to what we said. Um, he can be, if he was a super athlete, but didn't really listen to us and thought he was hot shit and didn't need to really pay attention. 
um, he wouldn't have gotten, you know, the, the go ahead and, you know, just under three months, um, which he ended up doing because not only was he an athlete, he was a coachable athlete. Um, you know, so you can be a, you can be a super athlete and not coachable and you're not going to really do much, or you can be, you know, a couch potato who is coachable, like a Duke beef hammer, and then end up being, you know, a professional wrestler. Very cool. Yeah. The one answer I thought you were going to say that I was like, you both are going to say the same thing is when people ask you what you, uh, your one advice for wanting to be a pro wrestler and your answer would be don't. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that probably would have been Cyrus's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, admittedly, part of our spiel is trying to talk people out of it, but um, you know, we we like to test the the mental, uh, the, kind of more than the physical. Uh, that's kind of part of the reason why we don't beat people up or do conditioning to death. Uh, we kind of test for the the mental and see if they have the heart for wrestling. Uh, and if once we realize somebody actually has the heart for wrestling, then we can really learn. And if somebody doesn't have the heart for wrestling or if somebody has a bad attitude, um, then, you know, they either they, they either get corrected or they wash out. Yeah, the process will the process works itself out. We don't we don't have, we don't even not only do we not agree with it, but we don't even need, you know, to beat people out of the business or, you know blow them up until they're puking and they don't want to come back because the process works people out if it's not for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most, most people who start with us don't make it, but I just, I, I, I think people come in and they, you know, they're only familiar with WWE and, you know, they think it's going to be easy. Well, yeah. Cause you're watching, you know, the top level, of course they make it look easy. It's like watching the NBA. Of course they make it look easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the reality is most people don't make it, but if you show up and try, I promise you will make it. Even if me and Tommy and Cyrus have to drag you kicking and screaming, uh, <laughs> you know, as long as you have a decent attitude, you will be a professional wrestler. Very cool. All right, Donnie, you got to hit him with the question. No, uh, the question time. <laughs> All right, we're going to hit you guys with the question. I'm sure I like you... questions. Yeah, <laughs> we asked everybody every podcast. There's no right or wrong answer. And uh, the question is, you are the main serial killer in your own horror film. What's your go-to kill? What do you mean? Like, like how, like how would you kill people? Yeah. Yep. What would be your signature? What would be your finisher? I'll I'll put it that way. (laughs) What's your serial killer finisher? How much chill do you, yeah, do you have one guy? Admittedly, I don't watch a lot of horror movies. Yeah. First, uh, my, I'll use my melee weapon, which is a choke slam. And then when they're down, I'm going to do the Zeus neck snap. There, there you go. <laughs> choke slam into the neck snap. Yep. <laughs> There's another new one. Still haven't had a duplicate answer yet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so that that's 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 kind of a hard hard question because i i i don't i, I kind of boring i don't watch a lot of horror movies uh um i play a lot of video games i think if i was going to be a serial killer and i know everybody's going to look at me weird i think i'd be a cannibal there you go. Just All right. like, and, like not leave like I, yeah i wouldn't <laughs> leave anything to waste like if i'm going to be a serial killer why not just go full creep like I wouldn't be like a sex pest or anything like that, but like, I think, I think I could totally eat someone. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be a cannibal. <laughs> there you go. Never heard that um. one either. <laughs> <laughs> the first cannibal I think we've talked to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, fry up the testes, have some blue mountain oysters. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're eating a face at that point, like you've gone too far, like you're, you're, you're going to get worried over some testicles. Like, come on, like you're eating a dude or a woman, I'm sorry, a person. I apologize. A person, yes. It's 2021. <laughs> <laughs> we ha- we had a whole conversation Tuesday about what do we call schoolboys now? Like, are they schoolboys, school persons? I think we landed on it's now the student roll up. Mm-hmm. Student roll student. up. It's a student, student. roll up. <laughs> yeah, I'd totally be a cannibal. 
No, so you got them thinking. Uh, if you, yeah. see, <laughs> you see anything in the news recently regarding a professional wrestler um, beating people, you know where to look. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was the bat salts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, it has been an intriguing conversation. Uh, thanks for giving us a lot of background on the Pro Wrestling Academy, the Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy, excuse me, uh, as well as your uh, partnership with uh, the NOW Training Center. Um, again, once again, our guests, James the Stretcher Avery, Tommy Chill, along with myself, Meat Hook Jim, and Donnie Hoover. We are the Wrestle Horror Podcast, and thanks for watching and listening. Yeah, well, I'm going to cut you off here. We're not going to stop yet. Sorry about that. We got to let them tell, uh, give out their information. Their That's what I got plugs. For, yeah. Plugs. <laughs> got to tell people shit. where to go if they want to train. <laughs> yeah, got to get their shit in, Jim. Video <laughs> <laughs> of editing. Ohio, <laughs> Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy dot com uh, uh, or Ohio Pro Wrestling Academy at gmail dot com. Uh, or, uh, you can reach me by phone, but I don't remember that number. Uh, so again, I'm going to refer you to Ohio pro wrestling academy.com. Uh, not only can you get information about the school, but you can also see, uh, some of our past and present alum that's been through. Uh, and I'm actually in the process of adding, uh, some more, uh, alum members, uh, probably by this weekend. So. All right. Well, I'm going to try this again since I. <laughs> Once again, Tommy Chill, James Avery, thanks for coming on Wrestle Horror with us. Me and Donnie are going to just go do something, do some editing, whatnot. Thanks for watching. Ah, we ain't editing nothing. We're leaving. No, nope, forget it. <laughs> Too much work. Leave it in. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets. Facebook.com backslash Wrestle Horror, Instagram at Wrestle Horror, Twitter at Wrestle Horror, on YouTube at the Wrestle Horror channel. And you can also find us on our website, www.wrestlehorror.com.